Good day everyone and welcome to another tutorial. Today we will be making grass. Not just any grass, out close grass. Yes, grass. You're going to be able to make a video that is similar to this one right here. Sorry about the frame rate, it's because it's recording and playing back as well, so... Little short stumpy lawn grass, basically. And I'm also going to be showing you how to make this sun glare. So it's an absolute bonus on both sides. Oh, okay, there we go, there we see it. We have smooth playback. Much better. Okay, fantastic. So, let's get started. I actually, actually inserted this in the project we are going to be working on. So just go to 3D view, you'll see it's basically a clean setup. No camera even, no sun lamp, no nothing, just clean project. Basic render settings. 50% HD to make sure that we're actually able to see stuff while we're working. Uh, that's just typical stuff. Post-processing has to be on, compositing has to be ticked. There you go, see? And of course our output, always default, always um, an image format. Output into video is a bad idea, don't do that. Don't, don't. Just never do that. Okay, so first we're going to be adding a plane. This will be the area that will house the grass, if you will. So let's make that lawn. Give it a material. Ground. Let's make it brown. A mm, little bit redder. I like that. That's good. Up the intensity. Copy that color. Up that. Reduce the hardness a bit. Oh, that should do the trick. Uh, translucency is not needed, transparency is not needed, uh, full oversampling is not needed, we're not working with tune shading, and that should do it for our ground material. Okay, now we will be going to another layer, let's say this one, and we're going to be adding another plane. This will be our first grass leaf, or I, I know someone calls it uh, leaf blade or grass blade or whatever but you know what I mean so let's just go into edit mode on it default um, and then press U and click on wrap if you go into your uh, UV image editor you'll see it's absolutely perfect and all you do now is you extend it you can do it out of edit mode or in edit mode in edit mode is quicker um, press scale Press X to draw it along the X axis. Let me turn on screencast keys. I forgot about that, sorry. There we go. Okay, then we can just press R. Just subdivide it. Well, not subdivide, it's loop cut. Add a few times. Mm, that should do it. Remember, we do need a certain amount of detail so that the textures don't stretch irregularly, if I can say it like that. Okay, now let's get cracking. Uh, go to proportional editing. I think you can press O to activate it. Yeah. Uh, you can put it on sharp. We're not going to be doing this only along a single axis. If we do that, then we get a distorted shape. So we'll only be pressing S and shrinking it and growing the circle by scrolling backward or downward, however you would like to say it. We need a little bit of a stump at the end. Okay, there we go, that looks great. Okay, now we need to bend it a little bit. Oh, let's use that. Okay, that looks great. Okay, let's just make it a little deeper. A little more, there we go. Okay, taking this whole section over here. Still on sharp, take the z-axis, let's bend it down a little bit, let's bend it like grass, oh yeah, okay. And there is our first little blade of grass. Let's press T, make it smooth, hide that again. I think there's one that actually allows you to mark it as sharp, but let me see if I can find something like that. Mark seam, mark sharp, let's see didn't make any difference. Uh, let's see what it does do on these. Control E, mark sharp. Still nothing. Ah, anyway, the point is features there. 
Okay, so we will be calling this grass zero zero zero. We do this for the sake of the um, system count. Now we go there. Same for the material grass zero 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 again system count. Do a nice deep green. There we go. Uh, let's make it softer. Well, that ought to do it. Let's just make this a lighter green. And reduce the intensity of it. Now that looks good. We can adjust it later, so it doesn't matter. Add a little bit of translucency. Ignore those. Ignore strand options. Yeah, we can ignore options. Okay, just receive transparent shadows. Wonderful. Okay, let's start with our texturing. Let's call this one veins. Sorry, forgot the S. <laughs> okay, Control B to draw a little box so we can see what we're doing and go into render view. As you can see, we have absolutely no lights, but that doesn't matter because we've got emission. Set it to UV. Immediately you can see it stretches along the um, length of it. Uh, let's increase this to about 2. No, let's reduce that back to 1. I'm going to increase this one to 2. Yay, there we go. That's more like it. Uh, let's make it 5. Yeah, 5 looks great. Yeah, let's make it 5. 5 is better. Okay. Now instead of using our typical stuff, we're going to be increasing the alpha and we are going to be making it overlay. Okay, now we can add a light source. Uh, let's add a sun. Take it vertically. Let's just give it an angle. About that will do. Now let's see underneath. You can see that the light passes slightly through. That's because of the translucency here. Let me show you. Shading, translucency. See, it, it allows a small amount of light to pass through an object so that when you get a situation like this. And let me just move it over. Uh, grab X. Place it there. Okay, click on the sun. Let's make sure it has a ray shadow enabled. See, there you go. That right there, that's because of the trans, the translucency. It's not something that allows you to see something through something else. It just shows you that there is something there that's blocking the light. It's a, um, an effect you commonly see in trees and stuff like that. So let's just uh, rotate this one. We're going to be using it. Grab it, put it uh, on the x-axis, and let's just put this back into solid view for a moment. Okay, let's reset the location, reset the rotation, grab it, there we go. Wonderful. Now we already have a small problem. We need to put the origin at the base. If we don't do it, I'll show you what happens. Um, Go here, add a new particle system, let's call it grass, call that grass as well, and let's keep it at a thousand, put this on one, give it the length of the animation, which is 250 frames, make it random, no physics are required, uh, and then we go object, and then we select one of the two grass pieces, doesn't matter which, okay, for some reason they're lying in the wrong direction. Let's see here quickly. I think it's because I stretched it along a different axis. Let's see. Yeah, my bad. Okay, we just need to rotate them along the Z axis 180 degrees. And they're standing up. See, this is what happens. The origin point is your emission point. So where the particle would be, let me show you, is where the leaf appears. See, that little particle represents the origin point. See? Okay. So in order to fix that, we simply take our leaf, 
in this case blade of grass we select everything and we just drag it all along this way we just need to leave a little bit of flesh for it to be able to um, rotate and all that kind of stuff so let's just turn off proportional editing okay and the same with this one everything selected move it over okay now since we're already busy with this one we are going to make it unique oh yeah so we're going to be turning on proportional editing again no I said oh I have to be outside the edit mode there we go no I have to be able to do it in here as well oh, okay I just pressed the wrong button my bad okay take the Y axis make it shorter a little more stumpier if you will there we go, that looks good. Drag it up. Okay, there we go. Let's add a few holes into it. It's not something everyone will do, but it's definitely something that adds a little bit more character. This is just that little bit of realism we're looking for. So let's just take that out. We just need to be careful about the amount of holes we add. Okay, let's take faces, let's take a nice chunk out of the side and let's give it that and we need to add another one there. Loop cuts, take those. Oh, proportional editing should be off. Okay. Scale that up a bit, take this one in a bit. Oh that looks good. And let's just add a little bit more detail for this little hole over here. Let's just scale that out. And there we have one that's a little bit more full of character, if you will. Okay, now we are going to do my favorite one, which is to add one that has a little bit more complexity. And it's not complicated to do. All you need to do is you duplicate the original, you duplicate another one. Oh, fortunately, it should be off, sorry. Scale it again. Then we edit this one. Now we have to press tab and rotate it, my bad. Uh, on the Y axis, 180 degrees. Push that in there. It's fine. Let's go along the X axis a bit. Okay, and then we need to add another one of these. So we're going to press Z again. And this time, proportional editing should be on. So that we can bend it back a bit further. Okay, and then when we scale it up, we have a bigger leaf that actually does not block this one from being visible. And this one needs to be a bit smaller as well. Let's just rotate this one, just so it's visible, and that looks great. Okay, so we select all three, we press Ctrl J, and we can see our origin is at a wonderful place <laughs> and now we can make all of them individual the simplest way to do this is to finish one and then move on to the next one in order to do that we simply add a texture for the um, spots they are usually um, little black spots that are encircled with a little bit of yellow we add those so we call them grass spots a normal cloud texture will absolutely do the job let's make this a deep green my art teacher told us that there's no such thing in nature as pure white it's always an off shade and the same for black as well and I'm inclined to agree it all depends on the um, lighting conditions that you have but I'm no art expert that's for sure <laughs> Okay, let's see what that looks like. Render view. Mm, little too much. Let's reduce it. Let's increase that. Reduce this. Yeah, that looks good. We can keep it like that. Okay. Okay, now we're going to be adding what is known as a distortion texture. You can call it a warp texture as well if you want. I like calling it distortion because it distorts or it warps. So it's sort of similar. Uh, 
<laughs> uh, let's call this a white tip. When grass gets cut, the little tip at the top dies off, and I think it's to protect the rest of the um, blade, but I'm really not sure. I'm not a grass expert. Uh, let's add this. Uh, put it on vertical. UV. Oh, it's horizontal this time. Okay. See? Yeah, it's horizontal. Okay. Flip that over. Put the white on this side. Let's just see how much we've got over here. Let's do that. Put it on ease. Okay, that should do the job. Okay, disable the color influence, only turn on warp, put it on one, and there you see. Okay, see one is a little bit excessive. Let's look at the back of it. Mm, front's better. Oh, yeah, front's much better. Much better analysis. Okay, one is way too heavy, so let's reduce that to 0.1. No, 0.1 is too low. 0.5. 0.5 ought to do. Let's reduce the tip a bit. Let's go approximately there. Just give it a yellowish color and reduce its opacity. Set opacity or alpha. Alpha is also fine. Okay, that looks good. It's fine. I have to say our green is a little intense. Let's just tone that down a bit. Yeah, that, that's better. Okay, soften the color. Uh, the veins, yes, to 0.8. Yeah, 0.8. Okay, that looks absolutely incredible. Okay, now we need to make these individual. In order to make them all unique and wonderful in their own special way, we need to just individualize the materials and the textures. So we're going to leave this one zero. We're going to make this one one and this one two. See, their number automatically changes there at the back. It's just a little bit of uh, a trick there. Okay, now we need to make the textures individual. So we're going to make these like one as well, and these like the previous. Okay. So for the for the big one, this one, I'm going to be taking off the white tip. And for this one, same. I'm also going to be removing the white tip. Okay. Now we also need to remove the distortion texture as it's not necessary. But for everyone, we need to move the vein texture, the veins texture. Let's just just take it at a random value, the x, y, and z axis. It's just to make it its own uh, look. Okay, and the other one you can just leave on as per default. And do the same with the spots. Uh, grass spots, fantastic. Do that, do that, and all the way down to 10. See, now they're all unique. Not one of them looks exactly the same. Wonderful. Okay, now let's group these. Call them grass. Close that again, and disable the rendered view. Go to the first. Tab. See, there we still have our initial grass object. Now we're going to turn this into group and select the grass, pick random. Let's see what it looks like. That looks really cool. Okay, random size for my example, I used a value of 0.3. You can use whatever you feel like. You can customize it, you can increase it, decrease it. Go nuts. Uh, artist choice, if you will. Uh, we do need to add some randomness though, so we can increase that a bit and you can activate rotation, give it also a little bit more of a starting speed, increase the randomness of the overall and you can even increase the randomness of the image. 
And let's keep the rest off. Leave that off. That's fine. That's fine. Since we don't have any physics enabled, that's fine. We don't even need to bake it. It's perfect. Okay. Now we just need to increase it uh, to, let's try 5,000. Not bad. Seems like our random value is a little high though. Oh no, it's not. It's fine. Okay, let's add a camera. Grab it, shift C. When you grab it and you press shift and whatever axis, it means it's going to be moving along every other axis except the one that was selected. Okay, that should be a good viewpoint. Let's add a sun lamp, or just move this one to the first layer. Great. We're going to be adding a sun so that it glares. So let's point the cam to the camera, the sun. There we go. Let's rotate this up a bit. Okay, now we should have an idea of what the grass looks like if we press render. Not too shabby, but still some work to do. Okay, go into your world tab, this one over here, add ambient occlusion, set it on multiply, and add environment lighting, but not to a super high level, and put it about 0.2 or whatever you feel comfortable, and try again. There we go, that looks so cool. Well, we need some variety. It's not looking exactly how I want it to look. Let's go back into this little layer and let's add some randomness to it. In order to do that, just add a new texture. Uh, let's say color variation. Variation, not veritation. There we go. Uh, we make it a global texture. Let's just move it off a bit and let's give it on color. Let's say overlay. Oops. Yeah, overlay. Let's keep it overlay. I set it at about 0 0.5, 0 0.8. Make it 0.8. Put <coughs> this on 100% material. Not too shabby. Okay, do the same for these. Color variation. I think we can change the mapping on these as well. Global. Don't really need to change the mapping in this case. Overlay again. And the same for our last one. Color variation. Mapping again. And global and overlay. See what that looks like. Seems we have some level of variation, but it's a very small amount. Okay, let's up our specularity a bit, see what that does. That looks really cool. Okay, that looks absolutely incredible. I love it. Okay, it's just a little bit on the dark side still. Maybe if we up this a bit, we'll get a better result. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Good, we have some grass. Let's add some randomness to it, a little bit more. Random size, more, stuff up there. Okay, let's add our monkey. Mesh, monkey. We're going to be using our camera to insert the monkey. There we go. Up in scale, not too big. Um, I hate it when that happens. Okay, it's up the camera, 
grab it down. We we'll want to be somewhat inside the grass with the camera. Grab it along the x axis. Okay, let's see. Now oh, sitting neatly on the grass. Let's look at that. Wonderful. Okay, now to add that wonderful sun I talked about earlier. I'm going to show you how to make that glare. In order to make it, we need a shape that's going to be emitting a light value that's higher than 1. If it's not higher than 1, you might as well just give up right now. Okay, let's place it on the side of the head. Grab the x-axis. There we go. A little bit along the z. Okay, so on the z-axis. Just rotate it a bit. Grab it down. X. I like the way that looks. That looks great. Okay. Let's move the sun up a bit. A little bit over there. Shrink it down. And let's call this sun mesh. Let's just add a material to the monkey, Suzanne. Let's make it a soft reddish color. This is more of a peach. Ah, I like that. That's more like a terracotta type look. Uh, specularity we can reduce, make it softer. Like that it has to be like this in order for a terracotta look. It has to be a slight variation. Okay, hardness a little bit more. Okay, that's close enough. Uh, no translucency needed. Shadow receive transparent. Wonderful. Okay, now for our sun mesh. Add a new material, call it sun. Diffuse on full, make it a slightly yellow color. Uh, shading, put it on 5 on emit. Uh, and this is where it gets interesting. We have to make it not receive or cast any shadows, which means it has to be untraceable and all these things have to be turned off. Okay. Also, we need to be able to separate it out. So if you want to use that, you need to go Options. You need to set a Pass Index. Let's make it like 2. And go into your Layers. Make sure that Material Index is selected. Vector is only selected here because we um, can add a Motion Blur. And the rest should be absolutely hunky-dory. Now we can Render and get to that Sun Glare. I see we have a problem here. The sun lamp is here, but it's not seeming to shine. Is it even on? It's supposed to be. Ha! Oh, could just be a little low. Let's make it down a bit. Let's see what it looks like now when we render. Ah, I see that's much better. Now we can see our grass. Okay, wonderful. Let's work with this. Uh, go into your node editor. Just ignore all of these. These are just like uh, default stuff I make to um, help my processes go a lot faster. It's a lot easier than having to redo everything every time, so I absolutely recommend it that you make systems like that as well. It's simply just node groups that you make part of your default project. Okay, there you go. ID mask 2. And color mix, get our original image, stick it in there, that has to be the factor, make this black, so we only have the sun. And now comes the fun part, I want you to add 10 glare notes. 10. Not 5, not 3, but 10. The reason for that is we are going to be making a proper sun glare. We're going to be doing eight street glares, and a fog, and a ghost. So just add this to all of these. Sometimes I only do one, and then I just copy it and make it random, but the problem with that is... 
connecting everything happens progressively and not just one shot like this. So I'd rather do it this way. Okay, let's connect these. I'm just going to tick use nodes for a second so that it doesn't keep rendering. It should make it faster. Let's see. Yeah, much faster. Uh, that should be at the bottom. And then it's this one. Bottom. And then this one. Oh, sorry, my bad. Move the one. Okay. And last but simply not least, this one. And add. Okay, that looks great. Now we're going to be taking these one at a time. So what I need you to do is put up iterations to five, iterations to five, all the way to five, all the way to five. We're going to be reducing some of them, not all of them, but only some of them. So you need to make sure that you have as many on as possible. We're going to set all the mixes to one. See, this is why I typically copy one that's already been activated uh, and configured. Threshold is zero. There we go. Streaks has to be up to 16. Again, most of these values we'll be adjusting afterwards, but we're starting with the higher values. Okay, and fade has to be on 100%. And while we're at it, give every single one of them a random color modulation value. This is color modulation. What that basically means is the amount of rainbow colors that you will find in your um, glare itself. Some people prefer a lot more and some people prefer a lot less, but the reality is it's actually a mix of the amounts mix up different amounts. Okay, the same with the angle offset, make it random. A little more than that. let's make it like 37 and give this one like the biggest value it can go. It's 180. There's already one at 180, so let's make it uh, 167. Okay. Now we can now we can turn on use notes again and backdrop. See, there we go. We have the first one. So let's reduce the fade first thing and increase this to 100%. Add full fade back. Okay, we're going to be leaving that one exactly like that. Let's reduce this one to a fade of like 0.9. And 0.9 is too low. Let's make it 0.99. I like that. Reduce the iteration. Uh, let's make this like 12 streaks. A little bit more rainbow colors. A little bit more. 0.995. And three iterations. Oh, no, four. Let's give it a four. Yeah, I like that. Okay, next one. So taking this view node. Again, I have to make this a little bit different. This has to be on add. Okay, random amount of streaks. Let's leave this one at 16. Slightly changing the angle. Mm, let's give it three iterations with, no, it's four iterations, 0 0.99, 0.99, let's try 0 0.97, oh, I like that. Uh, 0.975. Oh, well, that's nice. Let's keep that. Okay, now we're at this one. Make its fade like 
Height. Wow, that's cool. Reduce the amount of glares like that. I really like the way this one's looking. Okay, I'm going down again, selecting this one, put it on add. Okay, this one full again, 0.98, same as the previous one. Reduce the amount of streaks. Make it 0.99 rather. Okay, let's reduce the angle. That looks great. And this one as well. Let's make it like 6. Uh, fade like 0.976. See what that looks like. Great. Okay, and off to our final two. These I just want to actually reduce. So let's take the one with the least amount of color and call it 7. Point, no, not 7. 9.7. 7, sorry, 9.7. 0.97. Goodness, I'm confused. Uh, <laughs> That looks a little bit too on the soft side. Let's make it 0.96. No, 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 0.96, 0.98. Yeah, that's good. Uh, let's just reduce this one's color, the main one, to be about. Let's make it 9 streaks and 0.995. See what that looks like. Perfect. Now we get to the fun part. We get to add all of these together before we add the final glares. Uh, there we go. One more. And that is what our glares look like together. Just hold on. There we go. See, it's a little bit intense, and the way we reduce it is simply by going into Converter, getting a color ramp, stick it in there. If you want to know, that's the original input of the image. See, now it's set on 1. Actually, 1's a very good value. Okay. Let's keep it at that. Add another glare node. Actually, two. Add two glare nodes. Let's duplicate this one. This one has to be a fog glow, and this one has to be ghosts. Let's see what the ghost one looks like. Oh, sorry, mix has to be on one. That looks cool. Uh, let's increase the iterations of the color. Let's see what it does. Love it. Fog glow. Uh, let's make the threshold zero. Up that a bit. Okay, let's see what this one does. Uh, it's a little much. Let's keep the threshold of one. Yeah, let's keep the threshold on one. Okay, add these two together. And then add them to the original glare we just produced. And you should be seeing what your total glare looks like. But it's a little too intense. So what we're going to be doing is let's take it down to like uh, 0 0.9. See what that does. Not low enough. Let's do this. Looking cool. Okay, now we just need to reduce these a bit, like 0 0.98, 0 0.98, 0 0.95, no, 0.985. 
Ah, look at that, look at that, look at that. That is incredible. Okay, then let's add that to our final. Our original, sorry, not our final, my bad. Say add. And let's get our original output, which is this. Oh no, that's not what I want. Go there. See, that's what the glare looks like when it's added. You can, of course, up it now that we've reduced the fading. So let's see what that looks like if I give it a full spectrum, if you will. That looks great. It's like the super glare. <laughs> okay, sticking that in there. And now we're just going to be finishing it off a little bit by adding a blur node, another mix node, color mix node. Sticking that in there, fast Gaussian. Let's just turn that off so that it works a lot faster. Uh, one will do. Sticking that in there and that in there. Using this. See what it looks like. Mm, a little too fuzzy. Let's see. Let's see what happens if I make it more. Less fuzzy, okay, wonderful. Okay, now let's see what else we can do. Uh, I typically add a vignette as well. And I saw how um, Andrew does it. Quite an extraordinary method, it's very fast. Uh, let's just stick this in here, make it a factor of one. Store this up on one, and then you'll see it should give us a white circle. Yep. Okay, let's see if it's like a ridiculous value. Let's give it like 20. And we can now overlay it over our original image. Not the original image, the one that we um, got over here. Wrong way around. There we go. Let's make it like a point eight. So that looks like mm, too much. Point five. Point five does the work. Okay. If you want to, you can add a little bit of lens distortion to your image as well. I don't have a problem with that. So let's just make that like point one, point oh one. Mm, let's give it a little bit more, like point two, point oh two. I'm oh, sorry. Mm, yeah, that'll do. If you want to add dispersion, you can, but keep it to a very, very low amount. Most cameras don't even show it these days. So if you want to add it, like maybe like 0.02 or 0.002, just like a seriously, seriously small amount. Let's make it 0.001, no, 0.01. Has to still be visible. Mm, 0.005 will do. Okay, stick fit. And add a sharpen filter. Let's put it on 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and stick it in there. Uh, let's see it here on full size. That looks excellent. Love it. Okay, stick that into your composite node. And you are good to go.
I do recommend though that if you want to add motion blur to this image, which is my guess, um, you can go into file, select vector blur. I always use 64 samples, um, but only 32 during the um, compositing process, otherwise it takes way too long to process. So you select speed into speed, Z into Z, and image into image. And that's your original image that goes to your outputs, like in here. This one goes in there. And it also goes all the way over here. We need to add another one for the ID mask. So that goes in there. Also Z, also speed. At the moment our render will look exactly the same because we have absolutely no motion blur active. So let me just show you that it actually does work by adding some animation. Let's insert a keyframe. Uh, location, rotation, and scale just because we can. Put it over there. Grab it. Z. Rotate it back and up and hit location rotation scale and let's see how it moves. Okay, cool. That should give us a good example. So you do want to get the sun in though. So let's put it in here. Rotate it a bit more, so we have a little bit of the sun. Uh, location, rotation, and scale. Let's see what it does now. Okay, we've got some serious motion with the grass. Okay, let's just keep on with the sun in. Let's do that. Now you should be able to see the motion blur once it's done. There you go. See? Now what I do recommend is adding it to 64 because as you can see it's quite jagged. If you go in here and you set it to 64, you'll see that it smooths out very, very nicely. There you go. See? Much better. It's twice as nice. Okay. Let's put this down to one again. Go that way and put this on one. And let's see. Viewer node. There we go. See? There's the difference. And now you can just render out your animation and share your results. <laughs> and that's basically it for grass. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you find it useful. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Have a good day.